so lie detector tests. My question is, are they admissible in court? Because I feel like you see that on SVU and Law and Order all the time, and it's like a big break in the case if the lie detector yeah. test comes back a certain way. Lie detector tests or polygraph tests, as they're called, they are not admissible. They cannot be used in court. Um, so the what's the point of taking one? Well, sometimes the, the point is the, the police will offer you a lie detector test, and they, they often use these in cases where there is generally a lack of evidence. Um, I've seen them most prominently in sexual assault cases or domestic violence cases where, um, in general, the, the case is uh, he said, she said. Um, there's no evidence. There's no witnesses. There's no video. There's no photographs. Um, this person is making an accusation against this person, and this person is denying the accusation. So the police say, well, what, let's take a lie detector test. Um, if you're telling us the truth, you should have nothing to worry about. Well, truth be told, people do worry about it. Um, people worry that when they take a lie detector test, their fear, their anxiety will come through as a uh, false positive. You know, uh, yeah. Um, so people are generally apprehensive about taking them, even though they are not admissible. Um, it also subjects you to more questions. The results of a polygraph are not admissible. What you say during a polygraph may be. Um, so generally speaking, along the same lines as Jerry was saying, if you're asked to take a polygraph, um, it's probably in your best interest to consult with an attorney before you agree or, or, uh, or decide to take one. Um, you can always take one privately. Um, we have utilized this um, in our representation of individuals who are charged with crimes or who are being investigated uh, with crimes. Uh, we use it more as a negotiation tool. Um, if a DA is uh, handling an investigation and, uh, again, it's a he said, she said, um, we provide some information that would tend to uh, err on the side of it didn't happen, right? Okay. So we have somebody take a polygraph test, um, and we would present those results to the DA as further proof that the person is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not admissible in court, um, they may be taken into consideration during negotiations. Like to establish credibility of some sort? Sure, sure. Yeah, so, I mean, we can do it. Um, we, we hire, there's retired law enforcement individuals who are trained professionals, former law enforcement. Um, these, these are not generally, you know, pay for a lie detector test and they'll give you whatever results you want. Right. Um, these, are, these are retired professionals who've been trained uh, to administer these tests. Um, we've done it right here in our office. You know, sitting in one of these chairs, they hook the person up to the monitors. Um, it takes quite a bit of time, a um, couple of hours to go through the question because it's not just, you don't just jump in and say, did you do this, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole, um, you know, interview process that you kind of gauge the person's um, numbers during normal questioning before you talk about what the actual subject of the lie detector test is. Um, so they are um, somewhat useful, um, not admissible in court, though. So they're not admissible in court because it's not accurate? Correct. They, or it they could have, be not accurate? Lie detector tests have not been deemed scientifically reliable. Okay. okay so nobody has been able to, to put forth evidence that these are reliable tools to gauge whether somebody's telling the truth or not. Because I suppose they go off of like what raised heart rate and different things yeah, like that. Yeah. Like if you can control your your heart rate or something, you could probably manipulate the results. Yeah, possibly, but at the end of the day, they, they've just not been deemed reliable. Right? Okay. You know, there's other scientific evidence that is uh, reliable that courts do allow uh, in evidence, DNA, fingerprinting, as you said, yeah. um, things like that, they're reliable. That scientific evidence comes in. Lie detector tests do not. GPS. GPS. Yeah. Well, I think that we should do one because I've always wanted to do it, and I just think that we should each get three questions we can ask each of us and just have a good time. I'm not participating. What do you want to know? I'm not, pro I'm not <laughs> participating. Know. Absolutely not. <laughs> It'd be fun. So what? what's kind of <laughs> interesting, and I'll expand on a little bit about one of the points Greg made, but it kind of combines um, the topic I was talking about and the topic that um, Greg just handled. But there's a tactic within 
get asking someone to do a polygraph. I had a case recently where even though the polygraph was never going to be admissible, it was used as a tool for the follow-up questions. So the polygraph port in this case, the polygraph like training between the investigator and my client was like three hours long. That's like the intro to how this works and get comfortable using it. And then a couple hours after lunch of the actual polygraph. So he had been there like five, six hours. In some ways you could see that someone might be getting worn down a little bit. Then it was emotional going through the polygraph. And then when they brought him the results and said, look, you failed certain parts of this. We don't think you're being honest about one, two, three, four topics. Come on, tell us the truth. You know, look me in the eyes as a man and, and come clean on this. And then he made some confessions. Okay. So, so the, that's a tactic. The, the results of the polygraph were never coming into the case. Right, but, but he the, didn't know that probably. But the, I'm not sure if he did or not, yeah. but the conversation after the fact was coming in. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's actually, that's good. I didn't think about that. So, um, all right, well, thanks. I mean, if you guys like what we're talking about, subscribe, King Law Podcast, and yeah. Thanks.